The Adonisian July 2024 horoscope, a perfect time to repair your reputation with God. For you are God incarnate. July 2024 presents the perfect opportunity to repair your reputation with God. Just one thing is needed. Realize you are God incarnate. The ruling number vibration for July 2024 is 15 and the domain of the major arcana trump key of the devil. Freedom abounds thanks to this number vibration canceling out the vices and old habits that hurt you as the 15 key inspires awareness of the devils and demonic forces around you. In July 2024, we will all be made aware of the changes required in our lives. Vices, addictions, cruxes, and unhealthy relationships can all be mended, healed, and left behind. In the tarot, the 15th key of the devil symbolizes the opposite of freedom and being trapped in your ignorance and denial. Most of all, the ignorance and denial of God and God's omnipresence in our lives, including our very own beings. The devil symbolizes abiding by appearances, and the traps that come from living according to the status quo and outer expectations of others, in particular, religious dogmatism and standards. The enlightened individual understands that resigning one's own inner voice to the powers of another is ridiculous, especially when one turns to others to know and hear the voice of God. All we must do in order to become one and live in accordance to the higher will of God is by going within, in silence, with eyes closed in stillness, as in meditation. The loving and inseparable voice and power of God then speaks loudly and guides us vividly toward our life's true destiny, ultimately coming to the greatest realization of self, that you are God incarnate. Saturn rules over this number vibration and the first red root Muladhara chakra of the earth element. As above, so below, Saturn teaches us the highest wisdom one can gain, that of our first-hand lived experiences, which is deeper in power than anything one can learn from books. When the red root chakra of the earth element is healed within, with the power of Saturn, we learn to laugh in the face of difficulties, put to rest the anguish and fear born from our past traumas and pain, and unlock the life promised by God of abundance, prosperity, security, and bliss. When we feel the abundance of God within us, we begin to see it outside of us. So too, all the higher vibrational feelings, including nirvana, as in the heavens, so too in ourselves. Saturn is in retrograde motion from June 29th to November 15th. During this period, Saturn loosens his tough grip on our lives and his severe sense of austerity, freeing us to make the changes we desire for the realization of those higher vibrational feelings that will also manifest in our surroundings. We can change so much in our lives for the better, thanks to the powers of Saturn and the number vibration of July 2024, the 15th tarot key. Saturn's retrograde occurs in the humanitarian sign of Aquarius, the water bearer of the air element. Saturn retrograde in Aquarius will allow us to take control of our reputations, fix relationships that matter, and free us from those that have hurt us. Our ties to our communities will be emphasized through the lens of Saturn and the number 15 vibration, helping us to discern the good from the bad with wise discrimination. The strong spirituality of Aquarius strengthens the need to heal our personal relationship with God, so it is our own private, not public, esoteric, not exoteric, belief and faith that dominate any other external voices or communal forces. 
Some of us will find ourselves getting divorces from people, communities, churches, and social groups that proved bad and contradictory to our natures and destinies. Saturn's retrograde in Aquarius reinforces the spiritual truths of our natures so they are grounded in our ideal material realities and thus can we proceed onward to our perfected states as intended by God. Placing an ever stronger yearning for God with respect to our true selves is Neptune, also in retrograde motion in Pisces from July 2nd through December 7th. Pisces is the cross of fishes and the ancient sign of Krishna and the modern sign of Christ, which is ruled by Neptune or Poseidon, god of the seas. Akin to Aquarius, the water bearer, Pisces is of the water element and the powers of cleansing, renewal, and baptism. In particular, the sacred fishy oil anointment of the pineal gland accessed by the activated, healed, and purified third eye of the sixth Ajna Chakra. Pisces is a sign of psychic powers, prophetic dreams, and profound emotions. Neptune's retrograde invokes his qualities as the lord of imagination, mystery, bewitchment, and illusion. By going retrograde in Pisces, Neptune is waking us up to the delusions, illusions, and falsehoods that have taken hold of our lives. By becoming awakened to them, we can achieve redemption for ourselves by using the powers of Saturn's discrimination and divorcing ourselves of all the bad in our life to live more dedicated to the truth. The truth is not only subjective for us in terms of our true identities and natures, but also objective in terms of our reputations and roles in society. Wherever we have gone astray from the path of truth intended for us by God, we will be able to recover, get back to the path of our destiny, and redeem ourselves while we are still alive. Chiron, the lord of our wounds, is also in Pisces, indicating that everyone on earth is hurting because of some illusions and falsehoods imposed on them by society relating to our true spiritual natures as incarnated gods, and which they have given themselves over to, especially to churches, bishops, and priests, helping us all to tap into our highest inner knowing and with wise pride, not social arrogance, is Mercury when he also goes retrograde in Leo. Before he does, Mercury will transit Cancer, the water element crab of the occult. The greatest illusion you can have is that you are a human when in fact you are God incarnate which is exactly what the occult teachings reveal. Mercury brings his powers of order, clarity, and communications into our lives by helping us to further awaken our minds and consciousness to this divine knowing of our inherent divinity. From July 1st through July 13th, Mercury in Cancer opens our minds and consciousness to the greatest occulted knowledge, God in you baptizing you in this higher knowing that no priest, bishop, church, or external performance or showing in public can do. When Mercury transits into Leo, the fire sign of fearlessness and indomitability, he helps us to secure the divine force and feeling of God. We will, all of us, between July 14th through August 5th, feel like no one and no thing can hurt us, pierce our skins, and much less exert any kind of power over us. Indeed, what human or earthly power can topple God? None. When you have the knowing that God is you, incarnated, especially when you sit in silent stillness with your eyes closed in Adonisian meditation with an Adonisian mala, you are inviolable, and nothing can unbind you or divorce you from the most healing, 
purifying and transcendent knowledge that God is here, right now, within you. Like lions and lionesses, we become the fearless ones, feared by others. And with such power, our mere presence becomes as mighty as a roar. There is even no need to announce our presence. Our mere presence in a room is announcement enough. Venus, the Lady Lord of love, money, and materialism, accompanies Mercury each step of the way. She transits Cancer from July 10th through the 25th. Romance fills the air, especially inside our very homes, as Cancer is the sign of domesticity and the home front. Our homes will be our secure places of healing and spiritual sanctuary. Venus, in Cancer, inspires us to cleanse the energy in our homes, so they are true reflections of our natural divinity within, while also providing the escape from society, people, and churches that violated and offend God. These two weeks of Venus in Cancer are perfect for making our houses more than homes, but also the external churches we need to reflect the church of our beings. Thus can we really live with and inside of God. As Venus transits Leo from July 25th through August 23rd, we are going to feel the energy of God within and without amplified. Venus and Leo are an attractive, electric, magnetic combination, and we will truly be able to feel the power of standing proudly with humility on our own two feet, with God, within and without. After releasing ourselves from the clutches of illusion, falsehoods, and our church's priests and bishops, we are going to feel the amazing power of God. God will move through us, and we will move toward the satisfaction of our desires, which are not ours, as we are the effects of the prime cause, God. Understand that what you desire, want, and hope for are not originally your own. They are God's. That is true no matter who you are, and the true you when you are alone with your true thoughts, desires, wants, and hopes, that is God. When Venus in Leo comes around, you are going to feel the power of God, of unlimitedness, of being boundless, and the realization that no one was keeping you from a happy life, fulfilled and satisfied with yourself, but you. It was you who decided to listen to some priest or bishop instead of yourself, same as it was you who decided to go to some church and perform some public nonsense, instead of privately in your own home, in meditation, with an Adonisian mala. In short, it was you who chose to self-sacrifice yourself, which resulted in sacrificing God in yourself. Mars the lord of ambition, worldly power, and willpower, is happily at home in his rulership of Aries, the fire sign of courage and enterprise. Sexuality and the satisfaction of God's sexual urges through you, as recall, you are not the cause, but the effect of God's causes. And the sooner you realize that, you can begin to satisfy yourself fully in every way, because in doing so, you also satisfy God. God's will is as much about enlightenment as it is about sexual pleasures, and in accordance to your own true sexual nature, for it is perfect. And once you realize this and live this, you can truly proceed onward to your divine perfection as intended by God. Until June 10th, our sex lives will be on fire and our libidos in full force. No matter how old you are, sexual power and the need for sexual release lasts a lifetime. 
so expect the need for intercourse to fuel your desires for pleasure. Do so with the knowing that the closest we can come to the true bliss of God and Nirvana as human God incarnates is through the orgasm. Choose your partner wisely and pleasurably intercourse unbridled. When Mars enters Taurus, things will simmer and slow down. Taurus, like Gemini, is a sign of duality as the bull is both fierce and gentle, sexual and proper, but no matter what, always deeply sensual. Taurus lives through the five physical senses, but also the two higher senses of the sixth Ajna sense of prophecy and the seventh astral sense of being able to leave your physical body at will. As the earth element, Taurus is the sign of the physical body and the astral body. The fearless and courageous qualities of Mars inspire us to take back control of our physical bodies through healing, exercise, and healthier diets. Just as equally, Mars in Taurus inspires us to explore the occulted and unseeable realms of the astral plane, which can only come through the Adonisian chromosome pose with the Adonisian mala in hand. You must be steady, meticulous, and persistent, as Mars in Taurus is such. From July 11th through September 4th, Mars in Taurus will help us to arise from our bodies and see the different immaterial perspective of the astral plane, at the foundation of which is consciousness. Consciousness pervades all things, both in our waking moments with our eyes opened and those in our deeper states with our eyes closed. If you are single and desire your true love, Mars in Taurus can materialize them. If you are in need of money, Mars in Taurus can materialize it. Truly, there is no sign better for life than Taurus, as Taurus makes every lord and lady of the solar system the best they can be. Even better is the fact that Taurus, the bull, was never a true bull, but Jupiter Zeus himself, and he just so happens to also be in Taurus. So everything I've said is promised tenfold. Who better to activate Taurus than Jupiter himself, the bull? It is like electricity electrifying itself. And this thankfully translates into our lives as electrified careers, love lives, money acquisition, social standings, and community reforms. And best of all, having God reborn in us so truly we are born again. No need to change anything about our true natures and self either. Just letting go of the old standards, bishops, priests, churches, church communities, and divorcing ourselves of husbands and wives so we truly walk the path as carved by Jesus, who never married, much less went to temples or churches even worse, confided in the devil posing as a bishop or a priest. Thanks to Uranus, the lord of individuality, independent thought, and self-realization, also transiting Taurus with Mars and Jupiter, there will be no one who knows what is best for you better than you, who speaks to God for you better than you, who thinks, does, and follows the will of God as you should better than you. Star bending, Adonisian astrokinetic astrophysiology. July 2024 brings great opportunities for healing of the physical self by inducing the sacred Christos Kundalini secretion in harmony with the following planetary transits, thereby allowing you to perform occult astrokinetic Adonisian star bending within. And as within, so without. As below, so above. Pulse to planet, sky to joints. The Mayan right shoulder of the Hindu fifth Vishuddha chakra of how you bless others is being activated by the sun 
Venus, and the powerful new moon. In prayer and meditation, using the Adonisian chromosome pose and mala, dedicate your entreaties for healing of the right shoulder upon them. Ask them to enlighten your speech, to cleanse the blood returning to your body once it has finished circulating through your entire system. Ask the new moon to induce the sacred healing secretion of immortality and miraculous healing of Amrita by cleansing and integrating the powers of the Vishuddha. Upon the entry of Mars into Taurus on July 11th, the activator of the Christos Kundalini who arouses the slumbering snake from the serpent seed in the coccyx, ask that his accompaniment of Jupiter and Uranus grant you healing, amplification, and integration of your heart's left ventricular torsion field. Blood is pumped into the body from the heart's left ventricle into the circulatory system that feeds the whole body. Ask that Jupiter raise the electric currents within the neurons that make up the heart, so your heart is a stronger brain than the actual brain itself. Entreat Uranus for the power to assert your heart's intuition and discern more powerfully the difference between what is good and bad for you, what is true to your own inherent divine nature and contradictory to it, and stick to what is good and divine. In silent prayer and meditation, allow your heart to feel the pulses of Mars infusing you with courage, Jupiter with his mighty electric thunderbolt, and Uranus with his love for originality. Ask the harmonized Trinitarian of Mars, Jupiter, and Uranus to bestow you with the fearlessness to change your life for the better, cut yourself off from the old ways that no longer serve you, and to divorce you of the people and places anchoring you to harm and stagnation. With the harmonized Trinitarian of the Sun, Mercury, and Venus in your left elbow of the fourth Anahata Chakra of making space for self, ask for the wisdom to know what serves you, to preserve what you cherish forever, and what will help you swiftly fulfill your destiny. Steeped in the magnetic feminine charged Ida Nadi, open your own feminine self and magnetic currents of your left elbow to the powers for unconditional love of the Anahata Chakra. Direct your desires for unconditional love first toward yourself and beseech the illuminating powers of the sun, the enlightenment of Mercury, and the knowledge of what holds priceless value and worth of Venus to guide you to your proper destiny on Earth Gaia. Open your spirit and body to the harmonized contradiction afforded by Mercury and Venus when they enter your masculine right Mayan elbow of the fourth Anahata Chakra of making space for others. Allow their visitation to reveal to you the steps to take to establish the boundaries necessary for your relationships to be balanced, healthy, and for the long term. Do not burden yourself with worry for others. Instead, ask Mercury and Venus to make the correct choices and right decisions for your spiritual evolution and physical well-being so you continue with the might of will and strength of heart to fulfill your destiny. Chiron, Neptune, and Saturn are opening the doors for long-term and sustained improvements to your life by helping you stand strong and wise on your own two feet. For the next few years, this trinity of healers and teachers are activating your feet of the first Muladhara Chakra. Saturn strengthens your electric Mayan right ankle of flexible action, helping to harness physical strength, allowing you to recapture your youth. And if you had pain from a prior injury, Ask Saturn for healing so you can proceed walking toward your destiny. On the opposite foot of the Mayan left ankle of flexible spirit, mind, and body, the Lord of Healing, Chiron, is himself helping you to heal and ground your consciousness in the astral realm. Neptune opens your mind and third eye 
to bear witness to the occulted mysteries of the unseen. Together, Chiron and Neptune enrich our roots into the astral plane, deepening our connection to God and the source of the all, to further the sight of your own psychic horizons. The lunar Christos Kundalini activations and four cardinal points, the eastern point and descendant, the new moon in Gemini. The new moon of July 2024 occurs on Friday the 5th in Gemini and sets the rhythm for the entire moon phase of July. In the air element of the mentally advanced sign of Gemini, the moon emphasizes communications. Gemini makes these communications fluctuate and signifies beginnings and endings. Some friends and contacts will be made, while others will end. Depending on which palace Gemini rules in your personal Adonisian astrology chart, these contacts and friends could start or end through the lens of love, money, career, social reputation, though it all depends on which palace is ruled by Gemini for you. As the new moon indicates rising or ascending energies for the month of July, Gemini brings the opportunity for learning something new and intellectual advancement. The southern point and nadir, the waxing quarter moon in Virgo. The southern point of the nadir rules the underworld where ideas are formed and soon to be birthed. In systematic Virgo, the waxing quarter imparts the chance to perfect these ideas by proceeding with deep analysis. This Virgo waxing quarter moon inspires us to be careful, to mind our thoughts, and dissect all our ideas so they are thoroughly manifested with divine order for a long lifespan and with material value for humanity. The Western Point and Descendant, the Full Moon in Capricorn. Capricorn brings our focus and attention to our careers, work, and reputation. The full moon in the western point of the descendant brings defined clarity to our goals. The illuminating powers of the full moon help us prioritize stability and structure so we live up to the standards we place on ourselves while fulfilling our roles in society and the world. With Capricorn ruling the descendant for this month, we are encouraged to nurture our reputations and work with a strong urge to be productive and materialize something meaningful. So, for this full buck moon on July 21st, it is not the thought that counts, but the product. This full moon urges us to quit thinking and start doing and materializing our thoughts through products that we must also begin to test and see if they have anything of importance for humanity and the world. And if you're lucky, they'll mean something. You'll make a profit out of it. And that's a sure sign humanity needs you, that you have hit on something humanity needs. The Northern Point and Midheaven, the waning quarter moon in Aries. The lunar energies peak with the waning quarter moon of Aries on July 27th, highlighting the midheaven. Aries imparts his enterprising sense and encourages us to take our thoughts with physical stride and charge forward. If you desire support, and we all will, it will be important to spark interest without adding stress by being authentic and avoiding ulterior motives of abuse and usury. The midheaven reflects our higher consciousness, so the moon in Aries can help us mend fences by giving financial support and of your economic resources as opposed to, for example, love and light. Aries deals with the nitty-gritty of the world and its reality, and this date is not the time to encourage people who are in dire financial straits to know their financial situation is not a reflection of their worth. That is spiritual ignorance and fiscal cruelty. 
If you can, you must on this date support financially those who you desire to help you in return. Master Number Vibrations Avoid making any major choices and instead of creating, focus on thinking because the following master number dates are when the thoughts will count more than the deeds. Sunday, July 7th, Master Number 22 of the Fool. Use this date to make sure your concepts are well organized and practical, inspired by spirit but grounded in reality. And most of all, tell no one until they are fully fleshed out. Sunday, July 14th, Master Number 29 of the Three of Wands. Be alert, stay at home, meditate, and use good judgment to accept the help of others with reputable business expertise who have turned their thoughts into profits and thus made the thought count. If the thought has not turned into products that can be profited, it is not the thought that counts. In fact, it never is. Only deeds count, point blank. Saying to someone who is suicidal to cheer up and life goes on is cruel. Likewise, saying to someone, I hope you see your financial situation is not a reflection of your true wealth and wishing love and light is nothing but a sweet nothing. Avoid sweet nothings. Put your foot in your mouth. Thursday, July 18th, Master Number 33 of the Savior and Seven of Wands. Call in sick from work. Tell them it is a religious holiday or something. This is not the day to work and be out and about in the world, but sit in perfect stillness. This Master Number date helps you solidify your sixth sense and begin to develop the seventh the ability to leave the body at will. Turn your gaze away from others, society, and the world, and go within and do something better. Go out and about in the astral realm. Tuesday, July 23rd, Master Number 38 of the Queen of Cups. Put to practice these Metaphysical prophecies put forth in my Adonisian July 2024 horoscope as they can help you successfully contact your higher sources, guiding angels, and receive your own prophetic messages from God in you. Monday, July 29th, Master Number 44 of the Disciple of God and the Four of Cups. On this date, the very hand of God is reaching out with the blessings to make your cup runneth over. And you must absolutely sit in Adonisian meditation for you to be able to reach back. If you do not, the divine cup of divine blessings will be lost and you will fail God in you and your destiny. Conclusion the Adonisian Christos Kundalini Elements With the element of Earth dominating the planetary visitations in July, we have marvelous opportunities for grounding, rooting, and nurturing the growth of all these great possibilities for change, improvement, and embarking upon the new. Use the Adonisian Astrology July 2024 Lunar Sign Transits to plan your Christos Kundalini activation meditations. It is of prime importance to use wise discrimination through assiduous prayer and meditation with your eyes closed in silent stillness with the Adonisian chromosome pose and mala in order to accept who you are and not who society, your priest, bishop, or spouse want you to be. You must divorce yourself of anyone and anything who contradicts your true nature, and no matter who you are, abandon your church and church community. Know now that these are foundational for the devil, as only the devil uses churches and church communities. 
not God, as they are for the devil, vehicles for his evil ways, by poisoning the true nature and consciousness of people, so they become his evildoers, the bitters of his evil will, and violators of your own free will, which again is God's will. You are the church you need, and the unity between you and God is the only community you need. You only need to come to the awareness and integration of the fact that you are God incarnate. The precise ways in which these planetary and lunar transits will manifest in your life totally depend on your personal birth time, location, date, and name, as these provide the precise directions for your path and discovery of your celestial destiny via your true scientific Adonisian palaces. If you would like to know your own path and discover your true celestial destiny, and think you are ready to align yourself to the cosmic egg of your higher being, your star seed, and with that harmonized alignment, break out of your egg in this life and fulfill your true destiny in the world, go to adonisianastrology.com and claim your own Adonisian astrology report to learn about the solar system present and alive in you, which of your 13 joints are activated, along with the Hindu chakras, to harness your own cosmic powers of attraction, manifestation, and ultimate oneness with Source, so you can awaken, transcend, and achieve enlightenment. For just $1,111.11, you will gain all of this. If money is a problem, just ask Brad how profoundly grateful he is he took out a line of credit to make it happen. Ever since he did, he has divorced himself of his wife, his church, and his church community, and by his own words, has never been happier, lived better and freer, free to be his true self, free of toxicity, and most especially, free of evil churchgoers and the devil-worshipping church community who kept him from the truest taste of freedom, that of being a true man at one with God. If you would like to take this knowledge even further from theory to applied practice, claim a 108 bead Adonisian Mala, which incorporates the mystical powers of 108, and see God. 108 is not only a powerful lunar number, as the radius of the moon in miles, discovered by the ancient druid Celts no less, and encoded into their world heritage site Stonehenge, is 1080, but offers the secret to amplifying your magnetic field, thereby increasing your electricism and resulting in the expansion of your orbit of attraction and manifestation. And best of all, seeing God. And until next time, you are perfect. You matter. Like everything in the universe, we all come from the heavens. So do our gods. Try as we may to split and divide God from us kill and fight for one of the whole, God in you will always remain perfect, whole, and complete. As God is perfect, so are you. So are we.